Hi, my name's Amanda and I'm a pharmacist. Today I'm going to be talking about a type of pharmacy calculation called dilutions. And if you find this video useful, please press the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share it with others who may find it helpful too. Thanks, I really appreciate it. So first we'll be begin with a definition. What are dilutions? Dilutions are drug products with increased volume, which causes a decrease in concentration. And when a product is diluted, the quantity of active ingredient actually remains the same, but the concentration of the product decreases because of the increased volume. So I have an illustration here. You can see the small circle with the five dark blue circles inside it. And we'll say that's five grams per 100 milliliters is its concentration, which is 5%. So dilution, which is adding more volume, um, we'll say we add 100 milliliters to this. That's going to give us a concentration now of 5 grams per 200 milliliters, which would be 2.5%. So you can see our drugs, drug amount, the active ingredient, actually remains the same. same. In both cases, it's 5 grams, but the amount of volume is what has increased. So that's what dilutions are about. Um, there's, there are a couple different types of dilutions we're going to talk about. Um, there are liquid dilutions. These are weight per volume. Uh, usually in the units of gram per milliliter. And these are solutions. Um, solid dilutions, these are weight per weight. Generally you see these in gram per gram. And this includes creams and ointments. And pharmacy dilution problems typically involve determining how to make a weaker product from a more concentrated stock product. And this is our formula for solving dilution problems. Q1 times C1 equals Q2 times C2, and you'll want to memorize this. Um, Q1 is quantity 1, and we're going to multiply that by concentration 1, and that will equal quantity 2 times concentration 2. And when we know three out of the four variables, we'll be able to solve um, for the one, that, the one that we need. And something to remember about this, the quantity units must match. So if it's a quantity of grams, both quantities have to be in grams, Q1 and Q2, and the concentration units must match. So if the concentration is in a percentage, um, they might both must be a percentage. C1 and C2 both have to be a percentage. Or if they're in a strength like milligrams, um, they would both have to be milligrams. And the answers are going to be what units are used. So if we're solving for we have a percent in, in C1 and we're solving for C2, percent will be what the answer units are. Now we'll look at some example questions about dilutions. We'll begin with question number one, and this is part A. How many milliliters of a 5% stock solution are required to make one liter of a 0.5% solution? So first we're gonna determine the known variables of the dilution formula. And our dilution formula is Q1 times C1 equals Q2 times C2. So for quantity 1, that's what we're going to be looking for because it's how many milliliters. The concentration of this is 5%. It's how many milliliters of a 5% stock solution. So Q1 times 5% equals, um, and for part 2 of the equation, we're going to, it's one liter of a 0.5% solution. So our Q2 is going to be one liter, but since we're going to asking for how many milliliters, we'll put in 1,000 milliliters since one liter equals 1,000 milliliters. Because remember, our quantities must match in units. And so it would be 1,000 milliliters times 0.5%. Now we're going to solve for our unknown variable. In this case, it was Q1, quantity 1. So Q1 times 5 equals 1,000 times 0 0.5. Um, 1,000 times 0 0.5 is 500. And then to solve for, for Q1, we're going to divide both sides by 5. So 500 divided by 5 equals 100. So Q1 equals 100 milliliters. So 100 is how many milliliters of the 5% stock solution are required to make 1 liter of the 0.5% solution. Now we'll look at part B of question one. How much sterile water should be added to make the final product? So if you look at our question, you know we need a total of one liter, which is 1,000 milliliters for the final product. 
we know from part A, solving part A, that 100 milliliters will be the 5% stock solution. So now we need to determine the volume to add. And we'll do this by taking the total volume needed and subtract the stock solution needed, and that will give us the volume to add. So 1,000 milliliters minus 100 milliliters equals 900 milliliters. So we need 100 milliliters of the 5% stock solution, and then we'll need 900 milliliters of the sterile water, and that will make a total of one liter or 1,000 milliliters of the 0.5% solution. Question number two. How many grams of 5% hydrocortisone ointment and ointment base must be combined to obtain 100 grams of 1% hydrocortisone ointment? So first we're going to determine the known variables of the dilution formula. So Q1, again that's what we're looking for in this question as well because um, it's how many grams and the concentration is 5% that goes with part one. So it'd be Q1 times 5% and that equals Q2, which will be 100 grams of uh, concentration two, which is 1%. So 100 grams times 1%. So now we need to solve for our unknown variable, which in this case is Q1. So Q1 times five equals 100 times one. Um, 100 times one is 100. Then we'll divide by five um, for both sides to solve for Q1 and 100 divided by five equals 20. So Q1 will be 20 grams of 5% hydrocortisone ointment um, is what's needed for this. So now the other part of the question, it asks for how much hydrocortisone, the 5% hydrocortisone ointment and also how much of the ointment base. So if we know we need 20 grams of 5% hydrocortisone, um, we're making a product that's a total of 100 grams. So we will take 100 grams minus our 20 grams, and that gives us 80 grams of the ointment base will be needed. So to prepare this, we will add 20 grams of the 5% hydrocortisone ointment, 80 grams of the ointment base, and that will give us a total of 100 grams of 1% hydrocortisone ointment. Question number three. If you combine 30 grams of 5% lidocaine ointment with 15 grams of ointment base, what is the new percent strength? So this is a solid dilutions um, problem. So we're gonna do it the same way. We're gonna determine the known variables of the dilution formula. So Q1 times C1 equals Q2 times C2. So Q1 in this case is 30 grams and our C1 is 5%. So 30 grams times 5%. And then um, Q2, um, that's gonna be our total of our product, which we know we're putting 30 grams plus 15 grams. So our Q2 is going to be 45 grams here. So 45 grams times C2. So now we're going to solve for our unknown variable. In this case, it's C2. So 30 times 5 equals 45 times C2. And 30 times 5 is 150. Then we divide both sides by 45 to give us what uh, C2 equals. So 150 divided by 45 equals 3.3%. That will be our new percent strength of um, our final product of concentration two. And you can see the reason that's percent is because that was, it was percent um, for C2, or C1 was percent, so C2 also has to be percent. Just as we had Q1 was grams, Q2 also was grams. So you always make sure your units match for quantities and then the units match for concentrations and your answer will be in whatever those units are, whether you're solving for concentration or quantity. Okay, now we'll look at a summary and just some key points to remember about dilutions. Um, dilutions are drug products with increased volume. And when we have this increased volume, this is gonna decrease the concentration, but the active drug ingredient remains the same. Um, some types of dilutions include liquid and solid. Um, liquid ones are generally in grams per milliliter. This includes solutions. Solid dilutions are generally in grams per gram. This includes creams and ointments. And our formula for solving dilution problems is Q1 times C1 equals Q2 times C2, where Q stands for quantity and C stands for concentration. 
And remember, our quantity units must match and our concentration units must match. And the answers are going to be in what units are used. And our steps for solving concentration questions. First, we'll determine the known variables of the dilution formula. And then we'll solve for the unknown variable. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video with others who may find it helpful. And please subscribe to see more of my drug information videos. Thank you.